Yes, I had to keep my eyes. I still be snoozing over there. So as introduced, my name is Joyce Hauser, and I am here to be the speaker. I have no idea what's going to go on, but something will go on. So please stay with me as I share my thoughts with you. And as I am noticing, the theme for this year has become reflections, something to think about. So today is a very special day, and I want to wish each and every one of you a very happy birthday because you're on this side of the whale, not the other side of the whale. So each day is a birthday, right? When we get up and move to physical dimension, celebrate it as a birthday. But what else is special about today? I know there is a full moon and I should have made notes to what the significance of this full moon is, but I could not find my pen. Just kidding. But that, <laughs> that being said, the full moon is special today. There's something about it is special. But there's something else that is even very, very special. And I will take a couple of minutes to just talk about that because it's somewhat personal for me. July 21st of this year is also designated as Guru Purnima. If we go in our Indian tradition and cultures, our gurus or our mentors are right next to the equivalents of God. So it is a very important, significant day for me because I have had the blessing of being initiated in many customs and traditions. And I have those that I consider as my gurus and mentors. So we'll go on a little journey from there because there's a little quote in Hindi. It is It goes like this. Guru Gobind do kare take lagu pain. Balihari Guru Apne Govind Dio Milai. It's in Hindi. And the translation is Guru being the mentor, Govind being the God, Guru Govind Dokare, God and Guru are standing next to each other. Who should I bow to first? I bow to the mentor because of you I met God. That's that verse is about. And I can vouch from my own experience, if it were not to be my mentor, you would not be hearing my voice today. My first mentor, which I didn't realize after that mentor passed on for a few years, and I became more ingrained in the spiritualist philosophy, I could see why that certain individual was my mentor. And that individual gets to be in that category. And that would be my mother. She is a mentor upon reflection after she passed for many years and me understanding the precepts of life in a whole different capacity. I started seeing to her to be a mentor. Because of her, I have this age that has been graced to me. Otherwise, I would have been on the other side of the veil if I know myself. Just falling off a tree, picking a guava somewhere. Let me just put it that way. So, but part of that is she has become my mentor because she didn't think about how, what she was doing to me, where as a child, I was like, oh my goodness, what did I do? But I realized she ingrained and instilled in me things and of value that has really kept me moving forward in life. Her words of passage for me was, are you gonna be okay? That's all she asked before she passed on. And I responded to her, I think I'm gonna be fine. And that was the conclusive dialogue between her and I for a few hours, few days after that point. But I saw her as a mother at that opportunity. And I went on. She is also my first spirit contact that told me what I was supposed to do all my life. And she kept me safe. And she had to make that hard decision. And this is hours of her passing. And I shared this thing because that mentoring of my spiritual journey started from that day of her passing, same day of her passing. And it was such a profound experience, like you are listening to my voice. She walked with me to the house, telling me what, how, what I'm supposed to do. And I took that instruction, I just went on. Shortly after that, I met my second mentor, while I was grieving this loss of my mother and still not a spiritualist, I was still seeking something 
for myself. And I came into contact with my astrology guru. And he became a very key point. With his grace, he allowed me to be who I am today. I was accepted as an initiate student, slowly became very close to him and practice what he was teaching me. But I was also initiated in the order of God three month or recitation. It has a certain precepts of following the prompts and so forth. So I took that journey. That mentor was also picking things out of my life that were not serving me my highest good. But at the same time, he was chiseling something that needed shaping. And there were so many conditions. Don't eat this, don't do this, sit this way, stand that way, hold your breath. A lot of instruction, but it allowed me to cultivate a sense of discipline. So my little experience of my not knowing what I'm doing went from that to a, a, almost a routine. And I enjoyed those practices as they were growing on me, I was growing in them, and I continued to enjoy those practices. And all, no matter where you go, all the spiritual journeys are identified as practice. They're seldom identified as a mastery because they always have to be practiced. They're not finalized ever. So they stay in the sense of practice. And there was a lot of things we did together. My mentor had this nonstop prayer ritual for three days and I was one of the placements. So I had to hold my seat and position for a few hours. And I was so blessed because I was such in a bliss. I'm doing something for my mentor, he's my guru. And I'm offering that as a service and I did that part, but it still takes me to that same room, same place man, that I said that I know what was the power that was building up in that room. So we finalized with our prayers on the last day. There was so much power. It was palpable. You could feel the energy, you know, Shakti, as you would understand from a Hindi terminology, you would understand that power, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Shortly in that fold of it, as that mentor was, doing what they were doing, I came into contact with my Reiki teachers. The wonderful Reiki master that initiated me, we addressed her as guru, but it was her teacher, her master, that really became my guru in the Reiki tradition of that belief system. And we went through this beautiful journey of training. So I have now three gurus. They're, they're absolutely close to my heart. That guru still is living in India and I don't have any contact with him. But once again, I can feel that connection because it's a lifelong initiation of tradition in some ways. So the guru has the order of being close to God because in the right order, in the right construct of that placement, they have the ability to alter the pathways of your life. There are many stories in theology. There's many stories in different religions where the mentor or the guru took a person and changed their journey altogether. There's a beautiful, beautiful story is there. There was a bandit, that, the koi that would kill people and rob them of their property. And he ran into a saint and the saint says, if you can't take the name of God, just reverse that and just repeat it. And he was very primarily known for his killings. And he started chanting, but the saint was so wise and intelligent, he changed Rama into Mara. So if you repeat it the backward, if you say it too fast, Mara becomes Rama. Death becomes God, because that is the reverse word, verbiage of that. So mentors have the ability to identify things in you, if they are in the right alignment with you and your greatness, they will etch and pathway for you that will take you to where you need to be. A lot of sage, saints, seers, they have the similar capacity. But in my experiencing of this day, because a part of me is, I have been so graced and blessed with my mentors and my gurus, that's that. So life led me to Casadega. And I was seeking and, and I came to the service in this podium. I became a student, a member, et cetera, et cetera. And here we are today. But I also met Reverend Diane Davis. She's still living. She has an activity planned later for the day. 
And I didn't realize how slowly my interactions with her morphed into somebody I looked up to. Her speaking skills, her ability and comfort with natural and spiritual laws and discussion. Also her ability to show me a different perspective of life upon discussions. I would find it so nurturing and engaging that I, over time, gave her that place of being a guru or a mentor for me. And I still refer that to her, that I have good mentors when we talk on occasions and we talk about the progress. And I said, you know, I think I have good mentors that keeps me in alignment. So she became one of my profound. And I still, every once in a while, when we meet up, we have some interesting conversation, thoughts to exchange, but the same place of awe is that I'm sitting in the presence of somebody I look up to. And that's my sense of connection with her. Then later on, life went on with spiritualism. I got exposed to the international community of mediums and workers. And then I also found this similar connection with one of the mentors that's passed on, Mavis Patella. And there was something about her that was so simple. And that was a grace, I think, that I received from her. So we became, I was like the pseudo student I was, she was not really my mentor by definition. But once again, she had the discipline, the ethics, the commitment for spiritualist work, for mediumship, for development, communication, evidence, et cetera. I definitely looked up to her because I took classes with her on a numerous time. So this journey that we cultivate within ourselves, you may have to think from your own turn. Have you been initiated by a mentor? Have you have gurus for yourself? Where is your place of reverence? a true mentor would be delighted in an elevation of student beyond themselves. That's how it should be. There shouldn't be anywhere where a proper mentor would curb the growth of their student. My mentors definitely touched my life in a way they made me better than I was, and I'm still growing into that. I'm nowhere close to being better than them, but definitely they've taken me to a whole different space. You have people in your life that you have experienced through your own life. And you might upon reflection find they left you with lessons. They may not be exactly your gurus or mentors, but they definitely touched your life, your thought, your experiences in a way that it became profound, absolutely life altering. So please don't dismiss that they have to be in a certain order of practice or something if they have turned your life in the most phenomenal way, give them that place, give them that little appreciation. Even if you're not talking to them or they're not close to you or not living, have that sense of appreciation where they have taken you from that point forward. So being in Casadega for almost since 2003, 2004, I've had the privilege of studying under so many teachers. And as a student, my catch was for myself, any new teacher would show up, I would like to volunteer for their class because if you're a student, you get to attend those classes at no cost. So part of my catch was, uh, there's a new teacher and I get to learn. And what I observed that I'm learning by observation mostly because I'm seeing what, where I am and where I can take myself next. So a lot of times it became that I'm really not there for getting the lesson, but to just recognizing where my own growth is, what new thing they can bring in my life. And I would take that on and then I would put it into practice and grow into something else. So that's the part of the version of osmosis is when we work with those things that are inspiring us. The osmosis also exists with those, that, those things that are not inspiring us. Then you do the reverse osmosis. You have to allow them to be where they are, but you go into that space. So Mavis came along and right along with Mavis, I met another wonderful medium teacher and healer in spirit, Reverend Janet Nohavik. I met her into, in a conference of Spiritualist World Congress. And that woman had leadership. That lady had a soul of a leader without asking. She just had that momentum in her. And she was a great advocate of spiritualism. I'm not shy of saying I'm a spiritualist. I'm ready to prove a point. I'm gonna 
take on anybody that challenges my belief system. So she has that little activism in her that left me inspiring. And that was year 2014. I stood in the ground, the grounds of Lilydale Assembly with my first World Congress of Spiritualists. And that was a life altering moment for me. And that lady instilled in me, I would never be shy in saying I'm a spiritualist. I have no qualms, no regrets, no hesitation. No matter where I stand, I'm very comfortable in saying what I believe. And my sense with that is that is the power she allowed me to feel and leave with me. So I got to know her over time. I worked with her. I studied with her. I interacted with her a few times. Never changed. Same commitment to spiritualism till she passed on. Absolutely phenomenal. Just to know the power without saying anything. She had that space for me. So I took her once again through my appreciation of some, looking up to somebody and finding inspired by it. I just want you to understand you may be inspiring somebody else through your own story. You're not the only one that has to be inspired, but your life story has the capability of touching somebody else in their journey. We don't know where that person might be. So being in this incarnation of human body, my personal opinion, but kind of a belief system, we must appreciate each day. Today is Independence Day, today is Memorial Day, today is my birthday, today is your birthday, because we have this day. Why can't we celebrate this day just for being? And just by being means I accept who I am today. What I can be has not happened. What I was is already gone. What I am in this time, I stand here to work on myself. Could I be my own mentor? Could I be my own guru? Yes, you can be. If you have that capacity, you can be. If you have the capacity to touch in with your own heart consciousness, you can tap into it. Let that be your mentor. Forget about looking up to somebody else. But at the same time, our abilities within ourselves, because we are all human at the end of the day, we feel the hurt, we feel the emotions in many different forms. We have to recognize we have this opportunity, but today is all that matters. Bringing to even finer moment, this is the only moment that it matters. Because two hours later, we don't know what the story is going to be. Maybe somebody will cross our path that will change our old vibration to a whole different learning curve. And that is a learning itself. That's a place of appreciation. I will allow myself to experience what I am supposed to be elevating myself from. So no experience become lesser or greater. It just becomes an experience. And that alone has the ability of making things so subliminal that they become potently powerful. And we have to understand what we are given is this beautiful spirit and soul that is hosted in our physical envelope. It has the ability to be our coach and guide all along our way. And we are trying to teach it what we are supposed to be. I believe our soul is teaching us what we are programmed or destined for, but I feel sometimes we are telling ourselves what we are supposed to be. So relax yourself a little bit. Challenge yourself to be close to your own spirit. Don't be so attached and understanding of the limited aspects of the mind that is telling you what it is all about. Relax, relax with the breath. Be in this moment. Yesterday, one of the clients asked, what am I, what can I do to make sure I'm doing the right thing? And all it spurted out for me is stop living in the future and not thinking about the past. That is only a moment you're taking care of. But life doesn't work that way, does it? Right? We have to take care of things tomorrow because we know that this is not how it's supposed to be. But it is, that's how it's supposed to be. As you live at this moment, things will become much easier because when you get to that, you have to get to. It'll wait for you. And that's all it is. Anything, any experience, anything that you're wanting is there. 
The other part of my philosophy that I feel I'm still discovering, this is a little already a pre-controversial topic. Everything that we know and need to know is already existing. That is through the laws of alchemy and alignment. We experience the new experience. It already exists. It's just waiting for us to get to that feeling thoughtful place within ourselves. And then we get tuned into that. And the laws of alchemy simply dictates things happen when it's the right alignment, right mixture, everything is in the right divine process. The laws of alchemy makes it happen. So the now can put us into that space where everything is just fine. And if you have to discern that, try to be in the now as much as possible. And how would you know where, why you are not in the now? Pay attention to your thought. If you're thinking about tomorrow, Monday, for some is a working day, for some is another cup of coffee day. But if you're thinking about what am I gonna do tomorrow, you might not pay attention to what you have to do today. And it's just as simple as that. So in the process of self-discovery, spiritualism has really anchored my own journey. And I feel it can anchor anybody's journey, journey because spiritualism is all about the spirit. And for us, sometimes we see spirit as outside of us while it is residing in us all along the way. It's all about the spirit. Our spirit is no different than those that have passed on. It is no different than anybody else in a different part of the continent, different part of the world. It is the same. Everything has the same. Our discernment or our scope of deciding what's good or bad, what's right or wrong, is what somewhere usually disturbs the moment of present. In that present moment, we're discerning all the time if it's good or bad, what we are feeling. We see through those lenses, and that's another tall order to go through and saying, I'm just gonna be present. It's not my job to even discern what's going on. Can I just be? So you really don't have to go through A through Z of life if you can just know how to pause on B. Just be. And just be is saying is, the thought is not gonna take me anywhere, let me just stay here. And it might give you a starting point for something else while you're in that stillness, quietness of yourself. If you read the old texts of spiritualists, it is so enriched and ingrained in philosophy. It really does not talk about mediumship. It's talk about life, how it is to be lived, what we can do with it. It really doesn't talk about somebody's earring is in your pocket. It talks about the potential of exploration of the afterlife, what's going on there, what colors are present, what words they are living in, what is the setup there, rather than just communicating through the evidence of spirit communication. That's not all that spiritualism is about. It's not about spirit communication. The philosophy is such an enriched place of growth, of understanding. We are the medium, we are the conduit, we are the channel. We need to strengthen this conduit, this instrument that then can receive more than what I think I can. And with that comes with that aspect of spiritualism that will hold you together and keep you in a place of growth. Your spirit will grow and so will you. So if you have any mentors, if you have anybody that you look up to, please think of them wholeheartedly, sincerely, pay them respect in your mind and heart, and then you go with it. And on a closing note, I will say, I also have a list of people that have taught me lessons what not to do that are also my mentors just as much the other ones. I keep them close to my heart because without them, life is colorless. We all coexist, but they stay close to my heart because I have a reverence for the lessons they are leaving me with because it allows me to be close to the cheese grater as whenever I want to. And this is very sincere thought, think about it. You can love them. They are your teachers. Why not? Think about it. Thank you.
Thank you so much. That was a wonderful talk. During our musical interlude, we will be passing the basket. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Our music